morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Freedom Church. Good to see you all today. I trust everyone had a blessed week and an exciting week. And that would be a good way to go for any week that we would have. And so, but we're glad to have you with us today here at the church and of course here online because you're going to hear the Word of God, not simply superficially. It's going to be the Word of God in truth and in love. And we're going we're gonna to dive deep into the Word again today. There's no doubt. Um, Brother Stephen will be the one uh, looking to do the message today. And I know he's more than ready. Because it's, it's what happens when you study the Word, we study the Word. When we really get in, into it. Now, it's not just superficial. We don't study the Word by looking at a scripture and saying, okay, I'll study, check it off for the week. No. It, really going into the scriptures is, I don't want to call it a work. It's not. But it takes a lot to dive into the scriptures because there's, it's, it's, the scripture itself is, is so deep. And, it's, and it becomes alive to us and I'm sure to you every time we do it and believe it or not the more we may be getting into the same scripture all the time works it becomes a progressive revelation to us i mean it keeps you keep adding more and more and the holy spirit adds more and more to us and it's kind of it's just like putting money and deposit it into your bank account because when you need that word i need that word you all need that word it's a deposit that we can withdraw from. And what we are withdrawing from is the power, the life, the love, and grace of God in our lives. And so, again, we're just so glad to have everybody with us today and again online, and, and uh, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. And so, and as you know, we begin our time together uh, yes, do we have worship and praise? Oh, sure, absolutely. But with, when we give our word here and we go right for it, we begin with communion. And there's a very important reason that we go for communion first off, all right? And remember this, it is not a ritual to be observed, Communion is not the Sunday morning whenever ritual to be observed. It is a blessing to be received. And when we take communion, and we hear much about communion, as we're going to hear a little bit here this morning also, we receive communion by faith. And what do we mean by what do we mean by faith? It's a trust in the Word of God about what we hear on communion, okay? Some people will call it the Last Supper, what Jesus had it, and we'll read that from 1 Corinthians. However, it starts, of course, with the Passover. And the Passover, when the Israelites were in Egypt, okay, and you, you, I'm sure you know this story, but that's what we're going to look at a little bit today to go for it in the sense of I want this to be real to all of us. Again, not just a ritual, but a reality. Because when we do, here, let me do this. Let's go over here to 1 Corinthians. Let me read it from here first, okay? Paul wrote this, okay? He said this in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Now this is what Paul is saying. The, the Lord Jesus came and met Paul. He, and after Paul went from Damascus, he was with the Lord for over two weeks, and the Lord specifically spoke to him talking to him about his ministry and what he was to share with the Gentiles and all. And so 
what he did here is he wrote this. Now, the Corinthian church is a quote-unquote Gentile church, okay? There's not a lot of, yes, were there Jews there? Absolutely. But Corinth was a troublesome church also. And so he specifically said many things to them, and one of them is about communion. And that's why he said, what the Lord gave to me, I'm delivering to you. And he said, the first in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And he said this, and when he had given thanks, he, speaking of Jesus, broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, what was interesting this morning for myself was as as we are going to go into communion here today, I'm always on a daily basis, not just for this morning in communion, but the Holy Spirit spoke something to me. I, I, it's not like it was an audible voice, but I, I know it in my heart, in my spirit, okay? One of the things, we talked about reasons for going through the communion. A lot of things that God had done, not Yahweh, not only himself, but through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, and continually does it through ministering spirits for the heirs of salvation, which are, the, or which are angels, okay? We can do this and should do this, again, trusting in his word, because this protects us. Taking communion is a protection because of God's love, his mercy, his grace for us. Because he wants us to know that this is his broken body. And as often as we do it, we do it to remember his broken body. And that protects us because what was the broken body all about? Jesus took stripes on his back That's right. for our healing. Because as it says, by his stripes we are healed. That's right. So, Amen. Yahweh... Yeshua, Jesus, Yahweh the Father, wants to protect us from, as we talked about even last week, gross darkness covering the world. Protects us from sickness, disease, germs, viruses, yeah, right. infirmities, right. pain. He wants to protect us, and he has protected us, mm -hmm. which is why Jesus' body was broken. And what a lot of people don't know is that when Jesus did go to the cross and took his stripes, his whipping, so to speak, he was whipped by Roman soldiers on the way to the cross. And so, and one of the things you have to know that those whippings and his broken body was for our healing. Amen. By his stripes we are healed. Now, I'm going to read this to you, okay, here in Isaiah. I'm going to take just a couple moments, but now listen carefully to this. In Isaiah 53, in verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement or the punishment of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, here's an interesting understanding of this scripture verse. Because you think to yourself, you know, Pastor Mike, what's the big deal? He, he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. Yes, that's how the King James translated it. Originally, in the Hebrew, we have two original Hebrew words, makab and koli. And that speaks of, he bore our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, and our distresses. Did you hear me? Sicknesses, weaknesses, distresses. Yet we ignorantly, oh, I'm sorry, and carried away our sorrows, our pains of punishment, our diseases. Those, those Hebrew words speak of sicknesses and diseases, distresses, mm -hmm. basically 
problems, weaknesses, infirmities, and you can add to that any, again, any disease, any sickness. You can talk about it from COVID-19. You can talk about flus. You can talk about cancer. Then you can talk, well, there, okay. There's someone here who may be watching this, either you or someone you know has cancer. All right. Now listen carefully to me. You don't have to keep it. It's been taken Amen. for you by Christ at the cross. Amen. Yep. However, you must work with God yes. because it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. And the idea of working with God is, is simply this, believing, walking by faith, yeah. Amen. trust in Him, mm -hmm. not by sight. And that's why when we do this communion all the time, you know, before every every beginning service, uh, beginning of the service, I'm sorry. We do this to show you that protection and what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's most fascinating is too, let me read this to you. He gave me this the other day also in Psalm, okay, Psalm 107. Psalm 107 says this in verse 19. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saves them Amen. out of their distresses. He delivers them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. In verse 20, and delivered them from their destructions. And I'll read it from the Amplified. He sends forth his word and heals them, and rescues them from the pit and destruction. Now listen very carefully to me, okay? Remember, God sent his word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It's over there in John 1. But when he sent his word, and this is interesting, he sent his word. He sent Jesus, and, and, healed them. That's right. Not only did he send his word, yeah. but his word did it. And we're getting that word today. And this is what you and I have to understand. Okay? And go for it. Go for it. You who has that cancer, listen to what I'm saying. Go for it. It belongs to you. Jesus did it for you. Jesus didn't do it for himself. Mm -hmm. What sickness and disease that he had? None. None. He took it at the cross for us and if you have it or you know your friend or, or a loved one who may have it share this with them yes. share the word with them it's to protect them from this sickness this cancer okay and go after it with them and i want to read this to you in psalm 105 this is this is cool i happen to think the word of god is cool I think it's life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. And we can read that in Proverbs. But in Psalm 105, I'm looking at verse 37. Now remember, we had talked about the Passover and what happened at the Passover with the lamb and the, the blood on the lentils and them eating the lamb. What it says when they left Egypt in Psalm 105, verse 37 he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Not one feeble Amen. person. Yeah. That means no infirmities, no weaknesses, no diseases, no sicknesses. He brought them out after the Passover. And that's what we have. And last but not least, this is what I have for you because this is what we're going to do right now, okay? In, in Psalm 23, Psalm 23, verse 5 says this, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Then thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. In verse 5 in the Amplified, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
you anoint my head with oil. My brimming cup runs over. And so now, remember, Jesus sat at the table that night. And from that table, he took the bread. And we're at that table right now. And we're taking that bread right now. Mm -hmm. And we're taking it for its purpose. For its plan and its purpose. And that's what we're looking to pursue right now. All right? And he says, which take and eat this. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And as we do this, for you who has that cancer, okay, when you eat this bread, take it and just say, Father, I thank you right now that through Jesus, by his stripes, I'm healed. Yeah. I believe it, Father, with my whole heart. I take it now in trust that this cancer is going to leave my body. It's going. It's going away because Jesus took it on the cross for me. And so, when you take this, thank him for it. Praise him for it. Father, I praise you and thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. And I thank you, Jesus, for taking that for me. Now take and eat. Now Paul didn't stop there. Also, after the same manner, he took the cup. Jesus took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament, the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Okay? This also is a protection that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. We are. When you ask Jesus into your life, it happens immediately. Yes. And you're just as righteous in God as, and, and because of Christ as Jesus is. We, we, we're not going to get into all of that right now, but we are the righteousness of God. We have right standing with God. No matter how stupid you may be, like myself, been there, done that more than a few times. And no matter what mistakes we may make, we are in right standing with God yeah. by the new covenant and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. That's who we are, and that's what we're going to be at this table because the enemy against us wants us to be in condemnation, just like he wants us to be sick. But remember, he set a table before us with this bread and with this cup in their presence. Yeah. So, Father, we, and let's praise him together. Father, we just thank you and praise you right now that we are the righteousness of God, of you, Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. And we take this, Father, and thank you so much for our right standing with you. Take and drink. And... We praise you, Lord, for all that you've done during this time of communion in our lives and those listening and those here at the church. And we give you all the glory and praise. Now, now are you ready for the word? I hope you've got your Bibles. You have a notepad or whatever. Call a friend if you haven't given them this link for those of you online. And we're going to go for it. Here's Brother Steve. Wow, praise God. Isn't it cool to, to get a small message before you get the message? You get fed before you're fed, the appetizer. Um, communion is so uniquely special. And um, like we said, it's a coming together with Jesus Christ. You know, I actually took communion <clears throat> this morning. And I took it with my toast that had avocado and some ghee. And, and and I'll tell you what, Jesus or the Holy Spirit didn't look at me and say, no, you got too much avocado on that bread. I can't accept it. And I took it with water. So I say that to you because you don't have to have the, the little cups that we have here. Okay. Um, whatever you have at home, 
But I'll tell you what, it is such a blessing uh, to walk in it. Okay, so today um, we are going to talk about, and I'm going to pick back up on our authority, how to reign triumphantly. Because that's what you're called to do. That's what you were designed to do. Yes. And in fact, we're going to talk about it, how you were designed from the very beginning, that we were designed to reign triumphantly. Okay, and like it has been my habit, I'm going to read from John 1.1, 1, 1, okay, to start us off. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the beginning was Jesus Christ. In the beginning, all things were made through Jesus. And without Jesus, nothing was made. So why do I keep reading this? Why do I keep bringing this back up? Because there's a key here. There's a key to unlocking and understanding your authority, who you are, who you were made to be. It's for you. It's it's it's. It's an authority that as you walk in, I mean, I'm telling you, the devil's going to start fleeing from you. And I'll tell you right now, if you haven't hit share on this and you're watching on Facebook Live, go ahead and hit share. I'm telling you, this is going to impact somebody's life. Yes. Okay? It's going to change lives today. All right? We're going to start in the beginning. You're going to turn with me. If you don't have your Bible out, those of you who are even here with us this morning, if you don't have your Bibles, okay, get to your favorite Bible app. All right? We're going to go to Genesis 1 in the beginning. Okay. Verse 26 through 31. You ready for this? Okay. Now this is God creating. All right. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he was created, male and female. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on this earth. From the very beginning... God said, over my creation, I am giving you, man, dominion. I'm giving you authority. Dominion is supreme authority, absolute ownership. Think about that. Okay, because we, we sometimes think, well, you know, people say, well, I, you know, you told us that Jesus gave us our authority. Ah, yeah, and Jesus was in the beginning with the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. Jesus was in the beginning. Jesus, when he came in his earthly body, gave back that which he took not away. Well, what are you talking about? Well, let's find out. Okay, but before we find out, I want to read you verse 28 again. God bless them. God blessed man and he blessed woman and he said, be fruitful and multiply. Why? Because what you create, the other people you will create from your seed will have dominion over my creation that I created for you to rule together. So from the very beginning, God gave man authority over everything, every living thing that creeps. You ready for this? Go with me to Genesis 2.15. Okay. And he said this, the Lord, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Well, why am I reading that? Because I want you to understand what happened 
in the transfer of power. Okay, because it's important. Because when we look, as we, we look back to look forward. Okay, that's why we look back. That's why we go back. It's why Paul and the prophets, and it's why Jesus, they preached from the old to bring out the new and to look forward and to have an understanding. Okay, but when Jesus comes, like I said, Jesus comes to give what he didn't take away. Okay, because in fact, God told Adam and Eve, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You'll surely die. And then here you go. Let's flip over to Genesis 3. Okay, here we go. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? See what he said? Did, you, did God say you can't eat from any tree? Is that what God said? We just read it over there in, in chapter 2. That's not what he said. Here's what the woman said. She said to the serpent, and now I understand, I'm going to take a pause here. This is all supernatural. Okay? Adam and Eve are having this supernatural experience in the, in the mountain of Eden. Okay? There's this serpent. There's this divine being that they're talking to. He wasn't there before. He shows up. Why? Let's look forward. You ready for this? The devil seeks whom he may devour. He comes to steal the word as soon as it's given. Yes. Crazy, huh? Yeah. He's been doing it since the beginning of time. Because God gave Adam and Eve a word. He said, you can have every other tree, but you can't have this one. Because having it, you shall surely die. Not in that moment, but death will enter into the world. So what does Satan come to do? He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, seeking whom he may devour, and he tempts man with knowledge. With the wrong kind of power. He says this, or what she, Eve said this, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, now why did she see that it was good for food? Because the devil told her it was good. And you see, she didn't listen to God. She's listening to this serpent because, oh, it sounds good. Maybe you've heard that before. Drinking this sounds good. Smoking that sounds good. Doing this with these friends sounds good. But is it? Probably not. Because it leads to something else. It's these doorways. It's these gateways. So the devil enters through her mind because her mind is the gateway to her heart. And she has to start thinking. And some of you may be thinking, where's Adam in all this? Well, we'll find out. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food and it was a delight to her eyes. Isn't it funny how things become better that you shouldn't take, that you shouldn't have? It just kind of, you look at, well, oh, you know, maybe one doesn't hurt. You know, maybe that extra cookie doesn't hurt or whatever it is. Okay. And she said, and um, she took the fruit and she ate. And she also gave it to her husband, Adam, who was with her, who was with her. Adam was standing there the whole time. Adam was there for the conversation when God said, I'm giving you dominion over everything. The only thing you can't do is this. God gave them everything. And said, one thing you cannot do. And the devil said, that's my take. That's my in. And then both their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. What did God say to Adam and Eve? He said, you have dominion over everything that creeps. You know what that would have included? The serpent. They could have told the serpent to leave, to get out. Why? 
because that was their dominion. God gave them the supreme authority. God gave them the absolute ownership of the garden, the mountain of Eden. He said, it's yours. You rule over it. Be fruitful and multiply. Create more rulers with you to co-labor, work with me, and let's take care of this beautiful, wonderful place, heaven on earth. And the devil said, well, I hate these people because they're made in the image of the God that I don't like, the God that I want to overtake, the God, the throne that I want to conquer. So how does he get to it? He thinks, well, I'll put poison in their mind. I'll poison the mind of the very creation he made to have dominion over the very thing that I want dominion over. And so he took it and he stole it. Adam transferred his power over to the devil and, the, and, and, and no longer did Adam have authority. Did have supreme authority over everything. He gave it to the devil. The devil came and he did what he always does. He'll manipulate you. He'll send people to manipulate you. Maybe you yourself have been manipulated by somebody. Maybe you yourself, you're tricked by people. That you have this trust for people. That you think that you can trust them because of who they are. Maybe they're family. Maybe they're friends. It doesn't matter. But you've been manipulated by them. But the devil's use them to come and steal, kill, and destroy. To suck life from you. And we'll get into what Paul calls it, but I want to flip over as we take our journey here to Psalm 8. Okay? Psalm 8, verses 3 through 9. This is David. Okay? David says to us, When I look at your heavens and the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars have you set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? that you have made him a little bit lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him and with glory and honor. You gave him dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, all beasts of the field, birds of the heaven and fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, your majestic, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You see, David recognized something. David recognized what God did from the very beginning. And he says this, okay? And, and, and Paul later quotes this when he is talking in Ephesians. But he says this, You have given dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet. All things. All things. All things. All things meaning anxiety. All things meaning manipulation. All things meaning your depression or cancer or disease or sickness. The things of this world that the devil has put in to create chaos and confusion and to create um, uh, uh, sickness and disease. All of those things to cause disasters. God said you can reign over them. You were always meant to reign over them. And so, well, where does this go? Well, as I was studying this and reading this, I, I, asked, I asked the Holy Spirit this question. I was doing some, some work this week, and, and I was uh, on my lawnmower. And uh, I said, Lord, I said, why did you give us authority from the very beginning? I said, why did you do that? And I said, and really I said, can you give me a few different reasons? Because I want to really understand why. I want to understand what your thought process was. And the first thing that he said to me was this. And the Holy Spirit, I just heard this within my spirit. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's from Hebrews 13. But God gave us complete authority. To show us that he would never leave us, nor forget about us. He would never abandon us or quit on us. But he gave you the authority, his authority. And when we lost it because of Adam, God said, no, that's not, 
See, I, God said, I, I knew that was going to happen because I allowed man to make their own choice because I wanted them to choose to love me. I wanted them right. to choose to walk right. in authority. I wanted them to choose what they wanted, what they wanted to yield to because you can't force somebody to love you. You can't force anybody in the natural to love you any more than God can force you to love him. That would be abuse. And it wouldn't be true love. Yes. So God from the very beginning says, hey, you know, I'm, this is how I'm going to create man. But see, God lives outside time. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the first and the last. He knows how it starts. He knows how it ends. Why? Because he lives outside of time. So he knew the devil would come to steal. That's who the devil is. That's who the devil became. He, he wanted God's throne. And when you want God's throne, when you want the Almighty's throne, you know what you're going to do when you can't have it? You're going to go try to steal everything else. And what was the everything else that the devil has come to steal? Us, people, God's people, made in his image, his divine imagers, us, his family. Okay, so let's, 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 bring, let's bring Jesus onto the scene here, okay? Luke 4. <clears throat> Jesus is coming out of the wilderness. <sighs> After being there for 40 days and being tempted, okay, by the devil. He didn't, he didn't eat anything. He, he was fasting. Jesus was at, from a physical standpoint, the weakest he could be. And the devil comes to him. This is what he says in verse 3. If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone. Quotes the scripture. And the devil took him up and up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment in time. I want you to think about that for a moment. The devil didn't bring Jesus up just to look at Israel. The devil brought Jesus up to look at every part of God's creation creation on earth because that was Satan's dominion now and he says look in this moment of time he says look I will give you this authority and their glory it has been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will pretty crazy right it was delivered to Satan who was it delivered by? Adam and Eve. <clears throat> they delivered it. They gave it over. They handed it over to Satan. And so Satan knew, I have the keys. Okay? Now this is before Jesus resurrected. But who had the keys? The devil. And he even tells him, I'll give you the authority over all of this and their glory. The people's glory to him. All you got to do, you ready for this? If you will then worship me and it'll all be yours. And Jesus answered him again. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Quoted scripture to him. Boy, I see the devil came to Adam and Eve and could tempt them with, with, with um, being deceitful he could use cunning words so when he tries to do this hey let me show you this no you won't die now did they die in that moment no but they did die spiritually because they saw what they didn't see before they saw their nakedness they saw their flesh and it's pretty crazy when you think about it because before they were just these spirit beings and eating would have made them now see, oh, well, what's this? This doesn't seem right. But he comes to Jesus with the same trickery. And he knows who he is. He's the son of God. If I can turn the son of God, if I can turn him, if I can change him, if I can change his mind to just worship me, and he can see all the power that I've created down here. He can see what I've done with people. If I can get him on my side, I can take Yahweh's throne that's all the devil wants so he tempts jesus and jesus just drives him away and 
And Paul says this about it. 2 Corinthians 4. Okay. Turn with me there. 2 Corinthians 4. You ready for this? Here's what the devil's doing. In their case, the God of this world <clears throat> has blinded, <clears throat> excuse me, has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Oh, okay, Stephen, now, now uh, what does this have to do with our authority? Everything. Everything. Because as much as Paul talks about blinding the minds of unbelievers, you have to understand this. The devil is also trying to blind the church. Amen. Amen. Because if he can blind the church of seeing the light of the gospel, and we're seeing it, we see it. We see it around us. We see churches, we see ministries that just want to be relevant. They want to be trendy. They want to be this and that. And they've gotten away from, well, what? Does the word say? How do we walk in our authority? It's why maybe ministers aren't seeing the miracles. They're not seeing the eyes of the eye, the eyes of the, the, the blind open, or they're not seeing healing, healing miracles. But yet you hear every cop-out excuse. You ready? Because last time I checked, this is what Paul says. In their case, the God of this world, little G, okay, who's the devil, has blinded the mind of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, from seeing Jesus Christ in his grace, from seeing Jesus in all that he does, in all that he is, from, from all that the resurrection gave to us. Because no, God didn't stop at the cross. It can't stop at the cross. Understand if it stopped the cross, would be stopping at death, would be stopping at sin, because Jesus took every sickness and disease. He took every spiritual attack. He died a fleshly death. It didn't stop there. And the church can't stop there. We can't stop there. We got to keep moving on to the resurrection. We got to keep moving on to Pentecost. We got to keep moving on. That's what we got to move to. We got to... We've got to show people the light of the gospel, walking in love. And when we walk in love and we start to understand who and what Jesus gave to us, and as he, he made us, and I'm going to get ahead of myself here because it was the other thing that God gave me. God told me this, I, I gave you authority because I created you to be more than a conqueror. Yeah. <clears throat> I created you to be more than a conqueror. And, and, and here's how it works, okay? Let's just go to it, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's just go to it. We're going to go over to uh, Romans 8, okay? <clears throat> Praise God. Yes, Lord. <laughs> okay. Romans 8, 31. You ready? What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Remember, for those of you who maybe aren't Bible savvy, when Paul is talking here in Romans, Jesus Christ has died on the cross. God rose him up. And we're going to read that over here in Ephesians. From God rose him up and it was the greatest thing God ever did. Because every spiritual force tried to withhold Jesus back from being raised from the dead. He sealed the deal. And then Jesus Christ has ascended back to heaven, seated at the right hand of, of the Father, and, and put us in the throne room. That's how we got our authority back. That's how Jesus took the keys. And he told him, I have the keys over death. That's what, that's what Pastor Mike was talking about with communion. Okay, Jesus took back the keys in his resurrection. Jesus handed you back. Remember we talked about over there in... in um, in 2 Corinthians, or, or sorry, Luke 4, how, how the, Adam gave over, delivered over to him uh, uh, dominion over the world. Jesus didn't ask the devil to, to, he didn't trick the devil to get it back. He died for it to get it back. Yeah. And when he died and he rose again, he didn't, it wasn't delivered to him. He took it. He took it. And when he took it, he said, here, 
The keys belong to you. They belong to you. They belong to you. They belong to you. They belong to you. To, to, like David said, all things have been put under our feet. Yes. And Paul repeats that all things have been put under our feet. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is, who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who is indeed interceding for us on our behalf? So, so Paul's asking this question, right? He's telling you, hey, who's going to condemn you? When you believe and you see the light of the gospel, when you understand the light of the gospel, the light of this word, when you understand that, that who Jesus Christ is and what, the, and what the greatest plan of all time was, was Jesus Christ, then you understand what Paul is talking about when he says, hey, Jesus is the one who died. He was the one who was raised up. He's at the right hand of God. He's the one interceding for us. He put us in the throne room of heaven, and that's where we stand, which means all other things are beneath our feet. And so what Paul is trying to look at, look at everybody and says, look, who, who, who's coming against you? Who can come against you? What can come against you when you know who you have behind you, in front of you, beside you? All around you. I think it's Psalms 5. It talks about his favor surrounds us as a shield. Jesus is surrounding us with his favor. With his health and his life. Communion. It's what, it's what Brother Mike was talking about at the very beginning of all of this. The cancers, the diseases, the sicknesses. They don't have to stay. Yes. They you don't can. have to belong. You have authority. You know why? Let me tell you something. Because it's a creeping, living thing. You may not be able to see it physically, but, but the attack on the inside of your body, it's real. Yeah. It's a creeping, living thing that, that hides in darkness. Right? Uh, side tangent before I go into Romans, finish Romans 8 here. There's that saying, ignorance is bliss. Hmm. And I hate it. I do. I, 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 I hate it. You know, because people say, well, you know, if, if people say, well, you know, if you knew the truth, the, the pain that it caused you, you know, no, you know the truth. How you deal with truth makes everything different. Amen. That's right. You can look at this word and you can look at me and you can look at this church and you can look at this man. Man, they are full of crock. No, we're not. We're full of what the word says. Amen. We're not preaching of our own accord. We're preaching according to the word of God. Nothing that I have said here today has not been taken from the word. That's, that is a big difference. But how you handle the truth, how you accept the truth, how you bring the truth into your life allows you to either walk in the light or stay in darkness. Amen. Because the devil's going to come and try to steal this no matter what. Why? Because if you don't know your authority over him, you don't get to walk in health. You don't get to walk in prosperity. You don't get to walk in favor or, or divine protection. You're going to walk on eggshells your whole life saying, I hope God doesn't bring something against me. Oh, I hope God doesn't let this happen. Oh, it must be a test. How many times do you hear it? I must be, oh, God must be testing me. No, I'm, you know, I had the worst year of my life, but God must be testing me. Let me tell you something. If God sent that test, don't get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. you, think about it for a second. If the great almighty God who, who, didn't even, <laughs> who didn't even spare his own son to die for you is allegedly testing you with sickness, disease, traumatic events, why get rid of it? Why go to a doctor? You're contradicting yourself. You're contradicting it if it was God, which it's not. Okay? You, you'd be going against God's will for you. So you see how stupid, and I'm sorry, I'll use that word. It's a swear word in church. I understand it, but it is, it is stupid to think. 
that God is giving you sickness or disease or the hardest year of your life as a test. What did God tell you before that happened? Did you open your ears to, to hear? Change your diet. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. You ready for this one? Spend more time with your family. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like healing. You know what? God doesn't use what we believe healing should be. Spend more time with your family. Less time at work. Guess what? As you do that and you enrich that relationship, healing comes. Why? Because God told you to do it. Yes. Yep. It's when we incline our ear to his sayings. Proverbs didn't say incline your ear just to the Bible. It's a decline your ear to his sayings. Don't be ignorant. It's not blissful. Know the truth. And then hit the truth with the word. Paul says, be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He didn't say, be transformed by God renewing your mind. He said, you do it. Yes. Yes. You transform your mind. So if you're sitting at home and you're listening to this, one, God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's why he gave you authority. And the second thing that we're going to finish right here is you were created to be more than a conqueror. And let's see what Paul says about it. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who was at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Anybody want to answer that? Well, Paul continues on. He says, it shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. As it is written, for your sake, we are all being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. You know how many people I've heard end right there? I don't know. We're up against the church. Strap in. But Paul follows up with this. No. Emphatically, no. In all these things. What things? The things we just named off. Persecution, tribulation, distress, famine, nakedness, danger, uh, sword. No. In all of these things, you ready? You are more than a conqueror. Through who? Through him. Through Jesus Christ who loved us. Amen. For I am sure. Paul said, I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation. Nothing. Paul says, no, emphatically nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Think about that. Amen. Let that settle in your heart today. Listen. If I were you, after this sermon, I would sit down and I would read Romans 8, 31 through 39, 5, 10, 15, 20 times. Amen. Just sit there and read it and just read it and just read it and just read it and just read it until it settles in. Man, Paul is saying, and this whole Bible is written and inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's saying to us, wow, there's nothing. No devils, no demons, no evil spirits, not even angels. Nothing can separate you from the light of the gospel. But, you ready for this? There is one thing. Yeah. You. Yeah. Because you can choose to walk and to receive. You can choose to receive right now. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. You said in your word, you'll never leave me for to forsake me. So I walk over every tribulation that comes against me. Every single weapon that is formed against me, I trample over. You were made to be a conqueror. How's it make you feel? Because God, when he said, I won't forsake you, you know, some of the synonyms for that, I don't know if I told you this or not, but he'll never quit on you maybe you found people in your life that have quit on you 
that have abandoned you. But God said, I won't do it. Right. I won't do it. Amen. Even though dominion was handed over at the garden, I gave it back to you. I gave you my only son. And then I rose him up from the dead, from the grave. I've got two verses for us. Because here's the final thing that Jesus gave me, or that the Holy Spirit gave to me. is over in Deuteronomy. Okay? And we're not going to flip there because I want to get to these other verses. But I'll tell you what he said to me. He said, you were created to be above only and never beneath. You're created to be the head and not the tail. All of those things that are these metaphors point to being a conqueror. Point to the same. All things are under your feet because Christ is the head and we are the body as believers. So that means if it's under Jesus' feet, it's under our feet too. Amen. Amen. Last two verses here and we'll, and we'll end. But I'll tell you what, you know, as I was studying this, we're going to be in Ephesians 1, 18 through 23. As I studied this this week, sometimes you have to understand, sometimes this, this, these messages, for me at least, when I study it, and I study it pretty much every night before I go to bed or sometimes early in the morning when I wake up. But um, sometimes they don't come together until Sunday morning. Because... Um, if I showed you my notes here, I kind of write in pencil. But then this morning as I was going back over, the Lord and the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me with different things. And I have all these different pen marks. But, but it's, as, it's as Brother Mike says, my father, it's what he says, you know, as you study it, the revelation is, is revealed to you. And, I, and I'm going to give you something along with Romans 8. Here's your homework for the week. Romans 8, 31 through 39. Read it. Every day. And then read this. You're going to read Ephesians 1. You're going to read Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. And where you see the word you, you're going to put your name in it. Amen. Okay, and if you're praying for somebody, if you're praying for someone's eyes to be opened up, where you see you, you're going to put their name in it. But why don't you try this? Why don't you wake up in the morning before you flick open Facebook or Instagram or Fox News, or whatever garbage is on there. Okay, I'm guilty of it too sometimes. Don't get me wrong. But why don't you flip over those two, two sections of Scripture and, and have a look. Okay, but here's what verse 18 says. You ready? Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe in that power? Okay, according to the working of his great might. Okay, you ready for this? That he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule, all authority and power and dominion, above every single name that is named, not only in this age, okay, the age that this was written in, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, just like David said, and he gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who is all in all. <clears throat> Amen. Paul is praying for the, for the church at Ephesus to have their eyes opened, to see clearly, to see the light. I love the illustration my dad gave a couple weeks ago. And he said, he was, he was reading John 1, and he said that uh, the light shined in darkness, and darkness could not overtake it. And he said, look, there's light all around me, but you can't grab a hold of it. You can't take it and put it away. There's, that is when, <laughs> that's the word of God. That is the revelation of seeing Jesus Christ, the light. He's the light of life. A candle unto my feet and a light unto my path yeah. yes. is this word of God. And that's what Paul wanted for, for, for these the church in Ephesus. That's what he wanted for the church in Rome. That's what he wanted for the church everywhere. And then you know what? The Holy Spirit, you know what he said? 
He said, we're going to put this in the Bible because I want it everywhere. Because the moment you start to walk in the light and you start to read the word and you start to understand, I have the keys because Jesus has the keys. I walk in authority because I'm created to be more than a conqueror. I, 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 God won't ever leave me nor forsake me. So if I'm going through the worst year of my life, I can go back, Lord, show me, show me what it is. He may say, change your diet. He may say, stop hanging out with this person. He may tell you to stop watching this Netflix show. You know what he told me to do? I'll tell you what he told me to do. You ready? He said, Stephen, spend three hours a week with me. This is a, this is a couple months ago. I said, three hours, Lord, that's it? He goes, when was the last time you spent three hours a week with me? I had to think about that. I started a landscaping business. I've got three children and a wife, and we're a pretty active family. And I thought to myself, I said, okay. But you know what happened the moment I started spending, the moment I started spending three hours a week? Now, I don't, I don't clock it, okay? But every time I sit down, it's for a good 45 minutes to an hour. That's almost every night at this point. I started seeing things change all around me. I started to see the way my kids behave differently. I started to see, you know, even though I don't see my wife as much as what I did before, I saw my relationship growing with her. I saw my business taking off, getting, getting business, getting things that I don't even know how I got it. But why? I inclined my ear to his saints. The Lord led me to change my diet several months ago. And I've done that. And you know what happens when I, when I get off of it and I start eating the way I was before? It really does not settle well with me. I feel quite sick. But you know what? I've come to the realize, I say, hey, I can't do this anymore. I feel so much better when I do this and I eat this way. But what did I do? I'm inclining my ear to say, my, my blood pressure is fantastic now. Cholesterol, fantastic now. But he said, change this. Do this differently. Why? He wants you to reign triumphantly in life. Yes, yes, yes. That's how you reign triumphantly in life. And the last, last verse as we close. We've read it before. We're going to read it again. But I love it. It's from the Passion Translation. Okay, and it's Colossians 2.15. Because I want you to understand what Jesus did for you. Because of his love for you. He did this. Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness. Stripping away from every weapon and all their spiritual authority. He stripped away every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. Amen. He stripped it away. It wasn't delivered. He took it. And when Jesus takes it, it's gone forever. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. Yes. They were his. Amen. So as we close here this morning, I want you to understand, okay, because I don't know where we're going to go next week with authority, if, we're gonna, if I'm going to do something different, if we're going to do a healing service. I, well, but I wanted you to get the bigger picture here of authority. It started at the very beginning. It belonged to us. The devil took it. Jesus, I'm sorry, Adam handed it over. Yes. Jesus took it back for you and for you and for me and for everybody who listens and watches this. The choice is not God's whether you receive it or take it. It's yours. Understand the devil's always going to come and try to steal and to kill and destroy. He did it at the beginning. He did not change. As much as the Bible talks about God has not changed, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Satan did not change. When he was cast out, he did not change. The moment he tried to steal and take God's throne, he stayed the same ever since, and he wants it. He, he, he'll do anything he can to destroy you 
Because the moment you realize that he's under your feet and the moment that you realize that you reign triumphantly in life, not because of who you are or what you've done or, or not because of your triumph, but because of Jesus Christ, he knows he's in trouble in your life. It doesn't mean battles don't still come. They're going to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trust me, I had to raise my daughter from the dead. I had to watch my wife go through two horrible birthing processes. I had to, I, we've gone through times of serious lack financially. From times where we, where, where's the money coming from? We've gone through the battles. But you know what? You know what? I'll tell you what. The more that you, the more you walk in the light, the more that you walk in light, the greater the victory you're going to have over everything that comes your way. Now, he's not prepared for this. But I'm going to ask him to come close us out because, you know, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit told me a couple of days ago to follow the anointing. Okay? And we can get into that at another time and what the anointing is for all of us. But for me, I know that, that there's an anointing on, on Pastor Mike right now to end us in prayer and to pray for the sick that he was talking about earlier today. And I know that there's that anointing for him and he's going to come up and close this out. But I just want to say thank you. I want to say, don't be afraid of your lack of knowledge of the Bible. God will show you the moment you start diving into as you listen to these messages. He'll show you. He wants to show you. Romans 8, 31 through 39 and 1 Corinthians 1, 15 through 23. Read them. Make them a part of your week. Make them a part of your morning coffee, your break time, whatever it is. But watch. I guarantee you or your money back, God's going to open your eyes up because he wants you to walk in light, not darkness. I love you and I thank you. Brother Mike, come on up. Okay. I was ready. And uh, Amen. and I was just sitting there. And I said, Holy Spirit, whatever. Whatever works, whatever you want, is whatever we'll do. All right, now I'm just going to take a few minutes, okay? And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, Pastor Mike, yeah, a few minutes. Look at, I don't even have my watch on, but there's a big clock now here in front of me. And all I have to do is look at it. Okay, pray for me, God. One of the things that came, two things came up. One came up earlier to me as, as the service first started, but this one came up to me too, especially from Romans, <clears throat> excuse me, from Romans, as Stephen was doing this in verse 31. Um, he, he asked me, the, the Holy Spirit asked me, just focus on this. Because I, I do have some words for you, but it's not what you're going to expect. Because these words are not going to do anything for you that you won't receive and work along with God. So that's why he has given me um, these two things. The first thing is this. Over here in Romans, as uh, Stephen was reading earlier. Uh, what shall we say in verse 31? What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who? Who can be against us? Who can be our foe? If God is on our side. And Stephen added, which was from the Spirit of God, what can come against us? Okay? Who can come against us? What could come against us? Okay? Two very important words in this from this scripture. But... And what's in the Bible, and I'm reading from the Amplified. He, speaking of Jesus, who did not withhold, I should say from you know, Yahweh. He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Now listen, will Yahweh, will God not also, will God not also with him, with Jesus, freely and generously give us all 
things. Now listen, okay? Even as Stephen was talking about through his message, okay? Jesus, like I said, in what we said earlier, Jesus not sick, he took the sickness. Jesus, he, he did it all for us. And what is the most important thing, and I like how that, believe it or not, the King James put it, how shall he, God, not with him, with him, Jesus, also freely give us all things? Freely, with Jesus, how will he not freely do that for us? Freely give us, freely, freely, freely. Grace, unearned, undeserved, unmerited. Freely give us all things. Amen. And even as Stephen was talking about earlier, what things do you need? What, what, what is there, what is there that's, we, we called out cancer earlier. Yeah. Okay. But, but there's more. But again, you have to believe this. You have to receive this. You have to take this. That he freely gives us these things along with Jesus. Yes. And, and wait, wait till we get into the battle of the keys. Oh my gosh. But the last thing was, and this came to me in the beginning of the service, is this. Because enough of you thinking that God's just going to do this for you. Okay? We consider everything, well, if, if it's God's will, then he's going to do it. No, if it's his will, he's going to ask you to take it. Amen. And he's going to be working with you, cooperating with you. Amen. Okay? Whether, whether it's some type of sickness, he'll cooperate with the medication. He'll cooperate with the doctor. He will, because it's all about the healing. But you just can't sit back and say, well, I'm just waiting for God to do it. You, you may wait for a while. Okay, but now listen, and this is what this is what also came to me. Okay, from Peter. All right, the idea is this: when the devil comes to you, the number one he says, first of all, this in First Peter chapter five: humble yourselves. Okay, humble yourselves. In other words, I know there's nothing I can do of myself for myself, but with God. Okay, with God, because of Jesus, by the power of his Holy Spirit, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. And that's acknowledging and having faith in the power of the Spirit, Amen. the power of the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ, not in my strength, but in His strength, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, He's our advocate. Yeah. He's our comforter, our counselor, our helper, our intercessor, our strengthener, our standby. Okay? And then He says this, casting all your care upon Him. And what does that mean? Why I casted all my care on the Lord so it's up to Him. No, I cast my care upon him because I believe he cares for me. Yeah. And when he cares for me, he's going to be with me, as even as Stephen said earlier, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Okay, and then he says this, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Whom he may. And he may do this to you because you'll allow him to do it. You'll let him do it. Because of, even as Stephen was talking about earlier, you know, um, spend time with your family. Remember that one? Don't work so much. Change your diet. Change your thinking. Who's going to do that if the Holy Spirit gives you that direction? How, how many of you use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Orange Maps? I don't even care. You know, use your GPS. You know what I like to say about the GPS? God's positioning system. Amen. And that's the Spirit and the Word of God in us. All right? Remember, the adversary is roaming 
the devil is roaming like a lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Whom he may. Not seeking whom he can and will whether that person likes it or not. No, because we're you heard it. We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors because Jesus is a conqueror. That makes us more than conquerors because we're following him. That's right. Okay? And then he says this. He is going to, you know, be advers- you know, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Whom? That's you or me. Whom resist steadfast in his fasting. Notice that what it says. Who resists steadfast in a nice in the nice weather, in the sunshine? No. Whom resists steadfast in when everything is going real well? It's real easy. No, 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 no. Steadfast in the faith, in the trust, in the acknowledging humbling yourself to what God through Christ has done for us and how Jesus finished his work on the cross for us. Yeah. Your faith, your trust, and, 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 and I'm hearing it right now. I, I don't have that much faith. How much faith do you need? Do you have faith the size of a mustard seed? Yeah. You have that. Yeah. Okay. You're hearing the word now. Faith is coming. Faith is coming. It's been coming for the last hour or so. Because the word, the word, the word, it's called the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Because Christ did it all. Coming by the word of Christ. That's what he's saying here. So you are resisting steadfast in your faith in what Christ has done. Do it. Do it now. Do it every day. Do it to the best of your ability. And guess who's going to come alongside you? Your helper. The Holy Spirit. In the Greek, that's parakletos. The parakletos. The one comes alongside to help. Strengthen. He's provided all of that for us through his Holy Spirit. Knowing this, the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world same thing you know it's like why is it always me it's not always you right. trust me right. you, you heard Stephen and what he went through okay no one's going to sit around and say well I don't go through anything right. really That's right. it's probably because you're dead okay if you're not going through anything That's right. all right and, and dead does not necessarily mean cold physically dead you could be dead spiritually too yeah but we're going to change that. We're going to remember what I said last week. We're going to turn this all around. You're going to turn it around in your life. I'm turning it around in my life. And is this a process? Oh, you betcha. You betcha. Is this revelation progressive? You betcha. Amen. Okay. Yes. How long did it take you to eat your dinner last night? Think about that. How long did it take for you to eat your dinner? Did you just take the plate and go oh, done? Well, did, it, did it take time? Right. Okay. All right. How long? Now, you want to get a car. All right. What is it going to take for you to get a car? Oh, yeah, money. Maybe even a loan. And then what do you do with that loan? You pay it off. Okay. This is what we're doing within the Word of God. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to walk in it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to stay steadfast yeah. in the faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, Pastor Mike, it's just what you're doing. I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you. Okay, stop it. Stop it. Okay, football season's coming. Any Steeler fans out there? Or maybe you're listening from Denver. Denver's got a new quarterback. Okay, maybe you're thinking about Los Angeles. They won the Super Bowl. Maybe you're a Tom Brady fan, okay? And what are you going to do when you sit down to a football game? Do you know how long football games last? Last time I checked, they're, they're over two hours. 
Yeah, the game itself is an hour. Okay. How many of you went to see Thor, Love and Thunder? That's a two-hour movie. That's nonstop. Did you fall asleep? Or could you not wait to go? Obi-Wan Kenobi's on Apple Plus. Seven, what was it? Seven episodes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, so God told Stephen, look at this. Be with me. Three hours a week. And Stephen said, what? Only three? You know what he can do in one? That's right. Amen. Come on. Yeah. And this is what we're doing. This is what we're going for. All right? So here's the word for you. You ready? Okay, you have your spiritual ears on. Here's the word God wants to give you today for you. Ready? Ready. Set. Go. That's it. Amen. You're thinking, what? That's what you do at the beginning of a race. Duh. And what is the race set before us? Being with Christ. Seeing the things of Christ in our lives that we can be that light to the world. Yes. He says, go therefore. Go in the authority I've given you. Go preach the gospel to every creature. Preach it to yourself. You're one of those creatures. Yeah. Amen. Go after it. Do it. And some of you... I see it right now in the spirit. Some of you who will begin to do this, even as you heard Stephen talk about it, as he began to do it. And he didn't keep track of the time. Yeah, that's right. Even as he began to do it, he, he saw his relationship change. Not only with his wife, but with the kids and how his business picked up. Okay? That's going to happen to you. Amen. Yeah. And we want you to let us know when it does. Yeah. And remember, it's going to go over time. You run the race set before us. Yeah. It's, it, and, and that race is not a sprint. It's a marathon. That's right. And so that's what we're going to do. So that's the word of the Lord for you and for everybody listening for us here. Okay? Amen. Run that race with patience. Yes. Faith and patience. Run it through the word of God, by the word of God. That's right. Again, listen to this, even as Stephen was talking about earlier. Remember the homework. Romans 8, 31 through what? 39. 39, thank you. I, I did know that. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's the word of the Lord. Yeah. And as you do that, I'm, I'm going to say something to you. Some of you who are going to grab a hold of this, your healing is going to come because you working with God, a cold labor with Him, yeah. and with the Holy Spirit who's come alongside you. Remember the parakletos, the Greek word for coming alongside. Your life is going to change. Not only is there going to be healing, there's going to be healing of relationships. I, I'm thinking of someone right now, I won't give her name, but if you're watching this, or maybe your relationships are going to change. Yeah. Healing of relationships. It's a big deal. Amen. Yeah. And so, Father, I thank you right now for everyone who's listening. Not only at this moment in time, but grabbing a hold of this later on. Father, I thank you that because of your word, because of your love, because of your mercy, because of your grace, become because we can go boldly to the throne room of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I thank you right now for that. And I thank you. All right. Okay. Specifically, Nora. Nora. This whole message has been for you and this moment in time is for you. Mm. And, and, and I, also, I also hear Mary. Ha. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, I'm thinking of a couple couples right, right, right now. There are some couples. You may not be listening to this, but your friends will. And I'm asking your friends 
knowing these couples who are getting married, there there's some relationship issues with those with those that those couples, your friends. You know you know that. Speak to them about this. Let the boldness of God give you and, and the timing share with them. Because God wants to see those relationships healed, yeah. healthy, mm -hmm. strong, being re resisting the devil, being steadfast, believing that this word is for them. And yes, I know there are some right now also. All right, I, I, I understand it. I understand with the COVID-19 still being out there, cases are rising across the country. Again, I think it's the um, the variant B.5, okay? You don't have to receive that. But God will cooperate with you, no matter through the medication, no matter through the doctors. Whatever it is, He is there for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you, and things are going to change in your life. Amen. And Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise right now for that for these words father we will go we will go on we will go with you we will take the time and i thank you for your leading and guiding us in all truth continually and as you go in that direction each and every one of you listening to this things are going to turn around things are going to turn around for would he not, when he gave his son, also freely give us all things? He would, he has, he has done. So thank you, Father, for it all. We give you all the glory and honor and praise in the name of Jesus. And thank you, and I declare the blessing of God on each of you this week going forward. Being blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Yes. And I thank you for the wisdom of God in your life and declare his wisdom with you and that he will open the eyes of your understanding and flood your heart with light. And we give you, Father, thank you for that. We give you all the glory and praise in the name of Jesus. And thank you for being with us. Thank you for for listening and thank you that I, and I declare you're going to have a great week and we're with you we're all for you and we are excited about what's going to be going on again next week at our service thank you see you soon